I want to talk about the number of problems with something called BMI, body mass index. This is an index to help someone identify if they're underweight, if they're normal weight, or if they're overweight or obese. But there's quite a few uh, problems with this measurement that I want to discuss today. One of the biggest problems about this BMI is that it doesn't tell you how much fat you have versus muscle. Because let's say, for example, you're an athlete with a lot of muscle, right? You're going to register as being either overweight or obese because it doesn't tell the difference between the two. So that's a big problem. It also doesn't tell the difference between uh, you being healthy or unhealthy. There are people that are overweight, but are healthy metabolically. You know, they're metabolically flexible, which means they can handle certain carbohydrates much better than other people. So BMI is not a good test for whether someone's healthy or not. Now, another test that could be done using a certain uh, calculated equation is BMR, which is basal metabolic rate. This is a fairly decent test to help you measure how fast you're burning calories. And then you have something called TDEE, which stands for total daily energy expenditure. So BMR measures the rate at which you burn energy, but the TDEE measures the quantity of energy being burned. And then there's something which I like called the keto calculator, which also looks at BMR and TDEE together with several other factors. And it'll tell a person uh, how many calories they should be consuming in a given day, how many macro uh, nutrients, proteins, fats, carbohydrates they should consume in a given day based on their basic metabolic rate and the total energy that they're consuming per day. To give a person kind of a, a rough idea of how much food they should be consuming to lose a given a certain amount of weight. And I do have this calculator on my website and I will put that down below in the description. But I do want to mention one very important point, um, just weight loss in general per week. A lot of times people look at that as kind of a determination of how well or healthy their metabolism really is or their metabolic rate. But here's the problem. When someone attempts to lose weight, especially if they're following what I recommend, which is get healthy to lose weight, not lose weight to get healthy, in the process of getting healthy and also working out, you are going to build more muscle mass, okay? You're going to gain more muscle, which is a point that a lot of people kind of omit in calculating if their weight loss program is successful or not. So when you lose fat and gain muscle, that's called body recomposition. And that's a good thing, especially if you're postmenopausal and you have atrophy, or even if you're not a female and not going through a menopause, you're just a, a male who's lost muscle mass and you're going to regain that. Of course, since that muscle is a bit heavier than fat, there's going to be certain weeks where you're not going to lose anything but your clothes are going to feel more and more loose. So when you lose weight, initially you lose the water weight and then you plateau and then you, maybe you lose some fat and then it plateaus, right? What could be happening and which is, I think is very common if you're doing this in a healthy way is you're building up the muscle mass, which is a really good thing. So sometimes you have to take a look at that with how loose your clothes are and look at the BMI with not too much importance really. Because BMI is a rough idea if the person fits into this average height. And uh, the calculation is you're basically dividing your total weight in kilograms by your height in meters squared. But I would not put a lot of importance on that evaluation. Instead, if you really want to know how much fat versus protein versus bone that you have, you want to get a DEXA scan. That's a very accurate way of doing it. You can also get an MRI. You can also do a simple waist to hip ratio assessment, because that calculation is very simple and it's very quick. And uh, it, it takes in consideration this visceral abdominal fat, which is a very good indicator of overall health. And then again, you have other really important biomarkers too that contribute to that information, like an A1C test, which measures the average blood sugar for three months, as well as getting a blood glucose monitor and assessing your blood sugar maybe even through the day or even after you eat. Very, very valuable. As well as you can get some of them that also do like ketone uh, evaluations too, like a blood ketone evaluation. Not necessarily a urine ketone test. With those strips, 
because those are not as accurate, especially after the second week, because you've adapted and now that might show negative uh, because you're not wasting all these ketones, you're using them. So a blood ketone slash blood sugar a, a little device uh, like Keto Mojo has a really good one. That's what I would recommend. Another really good test for overall health, especially fitness, is called VO2 Max. You have to go somewhere to get this test, but it's a very dynamic test of how much fitness you have and how much oxygen you're consuming through the mitochondria. Then you have another test called the HRV Heart Rate Variability Test. And I really like this test. It's a simple device, not terribly expensive, to be able to um, look at the autonomic nervous system in relationship to the two different systems, the, the fight or flight and the recovery system. And also the HRV is a good predictor of mortality. But the coronary artery calcification test, the CAC test, measures how much calcium is in your coronary artery. And it's a fairly inexpensive test to do to figure out how much longer you have on this planet. You want that test to be zero. Uh, sometimes it can be up to over a thousand, which is not good. But even if there's calcium that's building up in your arteries, which indicates there has been damage, there are things that you can do about it. You just want to make these lifestyle changes and over time reassess it until it's as close to zero as possible. And then you have probably what is one of the best assessments that you can do for your overall health, and that's called a metabolomic test, okay? I wouldn't just have that test done by anyone. I would make sure that person is extremely competent, and I will be sharing more information about that, but metabolomic testing is the wave of the future for medicine and even in the field of alternative care because it looks at your metabolic pathways real time, the areas of blockage of where there's a problem. And there might not even be a disease process happening at this point, but it gives you great data on predicting what could happen down the road so you can do something about it right now. And I mean, just one little part of this metabolomic testing is measuring uh, the Krebs cycle, which is in the mitochondria, which is huge because you're about as healthy as your mitochondria. Most diseases, including cancer, result from damaged mitochondria. So in this video, I just wanted to cover the big problems with BMI and give you some other uh, types of things you can do to evaluate your overall internal health and uh, your longevity. Now, because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side.